If you need to update your deck, go to 50cards.shop. Get 5% off your next purchase when you use code NEXUS. Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile. This is Richard, and I'm going to be showing you my Thingsaver deck profile using the Jewel Knight support that came out in the more rec most recent clan collection. So it's not like a hybrid Solemn A Thingsaver deck, but it's a mostly focused Thingsaver deck using Jewel Knight support. So going right into the deck profile, starting off with our starter. Uh, any Royal Pod and starter obviously works fine, but we're going with Bark Goal because of aesthetic. So Bark Goal, like all the other starters, lets you draw a card, and if you're going second, you get a quick shield. Then, going on to our main ride of the deck, we're starting off with four copies, Things Saver Dragon. When it's placed on the Vanguard Circle, you kind of bless one, search for Blaster Blade Seeker, uh, and then the Blaster Blade Seeker gets 10k for every Force Marker you have. Second skill is at the end of the battle this attacked. If you did not ride this turn, Soul Blast 3, put four cards from your drop back to deck, ride another thing safe from your deck as stand. So it gets you an extra Vanguard swing. You can use the skill of the first part where you search out a Blaster Blade Seeker again. That gives you an extra attack, and that Blaster Blade is going to be pretty big anyways because it gets all the power from those Force Markers. So the goal of this deck is to do a bunch of attacks during the battle phase and kind of like pressure your opponent with the sheer power and number of attacks you're doing that turn. The one downside to Thing Saver is that it skill only works like the next turn around after you ride it because it skills at the end of the battle that you did not ride. So you have to wait a turn, but when you do wait that turn, the deck pops off. So Thing Saver is a great finisher card. So for Thing Saver support grade three, we're running three copies of Pure Heart Jewel Knight Ashley. Ashley's skill is you Soul Blast 2 when at the end of the battle it attacks. You search for a grade 2 or less Jewel Knight, call it. If it's on van, you call two Jewel Knights instead of one. Second skill is when another unit's placed on this unit's circle, you can counter blast, and the unit called on top of Ashley gets another crit. So if you search out a grade 2, call it on top of Ashley, you can counter blast to give it a crit for a little bit extra pressure against your opponent. So it can help if you're trying to go for game for your opponent's four. You just need that extra swing to win and there you go. So there's a ton of soul charging in this deck. So even though you're gonna be soul blasting three from Thingsaver and then soul blasting two from Ashley, you don't really have to worry about that because there's so much soul charge going on in this deck. So there's a good balance going on. And the best part is about most of this deck is you don't really need that many counter blast to pull off all your effects. So this is a great deck if you're kind of being damage denied. Now we're moving on to grade twos. Three copies of Blaster Blade Seeker when it's placed on van or rear. Discard a card, retire when your opponent's front row, and you choose one of your vanguards with Seeker in its name that is grade less than or equal to your opponent's vanguard. So if you're a grade higher, skill doesn't work. Uh, you choose uh, your vanguard in it with Seeker in its name and its original crit becomes two. So when you ride Thing Saver and you call Blast Blade Seeker, you discard a card, Thing Saver script becomes two. So that also works when you do the re-ride, you re-ride a new Thing Saver, you call a new Blast Blade Seeker, Vanguard still is at two crit. So a lot of crit pressure in this deck. Second skill, at the end of the battle, this unit attack. If you did not ride this turn, put this on the bottom of your deck, draw a card. So that's another reason we're only running three, just because it puts itself back into the deck to be searched out again. And also Thing Saver returns four things from the drop back to your deck, so you're most likely going to be able to put that Blast Blade Seeker back in the deck super easy. So for the sake of space, we're only running three copies. Next up for Grade 2s, this is a Jewel Knight focused deck. So we're running four copies of Dogmatized Jewel Knight Sybil. Sybil is from the new uh, clan collection in Volume 3. So its first skill is when it attacks Van or Rear, choose a great two or less card from your hand, put it in your soul, draw a card. So we're already feeding our soul engine here. Second skill is when your other unit is placed on this unit's circle. Look at top three, search for one great two or less Jewel Knight, call it, put the rest on the bottom. So what I really like about this card is that because you're going to be doing a lot of multi-attacking and Thing Saver is going to be calling out Blast of Blade Seeker, if you want, you could call Blast Blade Seeker on top of Sybil, and then you could use Sybil's top look at top three. You find a Jewel Knight booster or maybe another attacker for the other column, call it. So really, really good field building, and it's still a good ride because it helps you fill your soul. So Sybil's really helpful for the deck. It's also a Jewel Knight, which is really important. Uh, next up, 
four copies of Explode Jewel Knight Lily. This is like your beat stick Jewel Knight. So if you kind of want to go for game in big numbers, you're going to be running this. When it attacks, you put two normal units from your drop zone to the bottom of your deck. Soul Charge one, this gets 5k. So again, a lot of recycling. So you could pick two Blast Blade Seekers, put them back in the deck, and then you don't really have to worry about it anymore. Or return more Jewel Knights so you can use Sybil skill. Second skill is when your other unit's placed on this unit's circle, that unit gets 10k. So same thing, if this is on rear and you call a Blast Blade Seeker on top of it, that's an extra 10k it's getting on top of Things Saver skill. Or if you're gonna uh, call on top of this just to use, um, what's its name? Lucius's skill to call another unit after you uh, re-ride, you can call on top of this and then that unit gets an extra 10. So this is a really good uh, big, big number card is the main focus of Lily here. And it's also a Jewel Knight. <laughs> so that was it for grade twos. Not that many grade twos in this deck. Now we're going on to the rest of our grade ones. Starting off with Fruiting Jewel Knight, Eunice. So Eunice's uh, skill is great for this deck. This is probably one of the best Jewel Knights for the deck, just because of how resourceful it is and free for the most part. At the end of the battle that this boosted, you put a normal unit from your drop to the bottom of your deck, Soul Charge one, return this to your hand. The second skill is Vanner Rear. When your other unit is placed on this unit's circle, choose your opponent's rear guards in the same column and retire it. If there are no units retired, you get to draw a card instead. So it's a great ride target because most likely your opponent's not gonna have a rear guard in the middle to retire once you ride on top of it. So you just get a draw. And it's just as simple as end of battle boost, soul charge, return something, bounce. So you get to have more hand because it has that, uh, that 10K shield right there. So Eunice is a great card for super easy soul charge engine and um, just kind of having more cards in hand defensively. So, and it's a Jewel Knight. <laughs> we're gonna be saying that at the end of every time I see a Jewel Knight just for like the reason we're running play sets. Speaking of which, we're running four copies of Morbidus. Um, we're just maxing out as many Jewel Knight like grade twos and ones we can just so that they're easier to search out with Sybil and Ashley. So Morbidus is skill, Vanner Rear, is when it's placed and when an unit is placed on this unit circle, you draw a card. So it's similar to Eunice, where if you write on top of it, you just get a simple draw, but also works anywhere on the board. So if you call on top of it, draw a card. First skill is act, put a normal unit from the bottom from your drop to the bottom of your deck, soul charge one, and choose a jewel knight and it gets 5k. And that's not once per turn. So if you have a bunch of open counter blasts and you want to spend like three of them just to like recycle soul charge get that three soul for thing saver if you want um you could do that so this is a really really helpful easy soul charge card but there's so many different ways you're going to be soul charging in this deck that you know you don't really have to worry about wasting the counter blast just for that so more of this is at four because it is a jewel knight next up to our remaining non-jewel knight cards we got three copies of Knight of the Exemplary uh, Sword, Lucius, not skill. <laughs> when your grade three or greater vanguard is placed, you, uh, put this unit into your soul, draw a card, choose a card from your hand and call to rear. So the whole point of Lucius is you could use it early if you just want to throw it down, ride thing saver, do the skill immediately, or during the battle phase when this, after this boosts, so let's say you have this behind your thing saver and it boosts, you use Thing Saver skill, write a new Thing Saver, and then afterwards you can move this to your soul and then draw a card, then call something from your hand. So that's another attacker for another extension of attacks during the battle phase. So the goal of this deck is to get anywhere between like five to seven attacks if possible. So you can kind of work with that. Um, but you know, obviously it's not always going to be there, but it's nice to have just because it's a card that goes to soul, lets you draw cards, lets you extend attacks. So Lucius is a great card for the Thing Saver deck. And it also got recently reprinted, you know, as like with that nice little triple R foiling. So that's nice to have as well. So now we're going on to another staple for most V premium decks, which is our grade three searcher, Laura Knight Sicilis, so Sicilis skill. Uh, during your turn, if you have no face-up damage, it gets 5k. First skill is very rare for this deck, just because you don't really kind of blast that much, but it helps. Um, second skill is when it's placed from hand. Look at top five, search for a grade three, add it to your hand, shuffle your deck, 
And if you did add something to your hand, you discard a card. So we are running this just because we do want to make sure we ride our thing saver, but also because Ashley is still a really good support card. So if you throw this down, look at top five, you find an Ashley, just boop, put it in your hand. Or alternatively, you could look for thing saver and just immediately discard it just because you're going to be using thing saver skill to return units from the drop zone back to the deck anyways. So you might as well just like filter out your deck early for when you get those drive checks and then just return the thing saver back to your deck to search out later. So Sislis is mostly a filtration card and your Ashley Seeker and also to guarantee your ride for Thing Saver. So still a really, really good card. Lastly is our tech, Knight of Going Alone, Herald. So not only is this card really good in the deck, I just love its name, so I have to run it in the deck, Knight of Going Alone. So Herald's skill, is when your grade two unit is placed other than from your hand during your turn, you can put this into your soul, that unit gets 15K. So obviously you can use this with Thing Saver when it searches out Blaster Blade, you can move this to soul, give it another 15K. When Ashley finishes attacking, you can soul blast two, pull out a Lily or a Sybil, and then you can move this to soul, give it another 15K. So we're only running one just because um, I prefer the consistency of being able to um, multi-attack and get more attacks out with Lucius. And obviously you need play sets of the Jewel Knights and then Sicilis is just more about consistency. And Herald isn't that great of a ride because it's only, a, you know, it's just a rearguard skill. I know Lucius is a similar thing, but Lucius is just great. <laughs> so you definitely need, want to run Lucius at like three. So. Herald is a great tech. I feel like this is also a great tech for the Jewel Knight deck, so if you want to run one copy of Herald and like your pure Solomay Jewel Knight, I highly recommend it. So that was it for the normal units. Now we're going on to our triggers, starting off with our Heal Guardian, which is our Innocent Ray Dragon. So just like all the other ones, when it's placed on guard, if you didn't ride to grade three this fight, you can do one of two things. Pick your Vanguard, give it 10K for the whole turn, or when your opponent's unit is attacking, the attacking unit gets minus two crit till the end of the battle. Um, second skill is when it's placed on rear from hand. If you have no damage, put a card from your deck to your damage zone, top card of your deck to your damage zone, just so you have damage to work with. So heal guardians are kind of like defying the V premium meta. So everyone runs full play sets of heal guardians for the most part. So you kind of want to do the same thing just so like, you know, you're keeping up with the defensiveness and the aggressiveness of decks. All right, next up for our next trigger with a skill, which is our Flash Shield Esults. So Esult is our draw PG. PGs are great. Um, you could do 12 crit uh, in this deck if you really wanted to, but I don't think it's necessary since Thingsayer already has crits stacked on it consistently throughout the game. So I feel like the crit pressure is already there, but I feel like the PGs are more necessary because there's a lot of circumstances where you're going to want to guarantee your opponent cannot hit you, i.e. you're playing against Overlord. So um, definitely want to run draw PGs and also draw triggers are great. Who doesn't love a free draw whenever you damage check a draw? Lastly, we are running our eight crits. Um, they're just minor, just kind of split up with different arts. So I got two lose. Three Upanas and three Flogals, just because I like diversity. Um, but it's basically just eight vanilla crits, um, because that's really all we can really work with. Um, I don't think the deck needs more draw triggers, because you're soul charging a lot, which can lead to deck out if you do draw too many triggers, or too many draw triggers. Could lead to deck out. I don't think this deck has a hand issue, and I feel like crits win games, so might as well run eight crit. Pretty standard trigger lineup for most Royal Paladin decks. So that's pretty much it for the deck profile. Um, if you guys have any comments, questions, or concerns, let me know in the comment section below. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.